So now for something slightly different. Vertebral compression fractures. You'll see lots of osteoporotic patients in your practices. And whilst this technique is new to us in England, it has been around in Europe for some time. I'm told that there's some 10,000 patients who've been treated with this technique. And it's useful for patients who've had, who are much younger, who've had tra real trauma. Uh, but we won't touch that today. We'll just look at uh, osteoporosis. So looking at vertebral compression fractures, they have clinical consequences and biochemical, uh, sorry, biomechanical consequences. And clinically, this is, of course, pain in its various presentations with physiological complications. When they lose their posture, the patients will get respiratory and GI system problems and reduce vital capacity. And then, of course, various compressions of nerves, either in the uh, in the spinal canal through retropulsion of fragments or directly on nerves as they exit the thoracic or lumbar spine from the fragments or the disc. And then you get loss of sagittal balance and coronal balance and <coughs> aggravated disc degeneration and facet joint strain and therefore arthropathy. So obviously when you're trying to sort out this patient, you must look at their bone quality, perhaps using a DEXA scan or biopsy. With CT scan, you need to type the fracture and particularly the MRI scan to look at the T2 sequences. So for the bone quality, you need to look at to see if the pathology is severe or mild. Is it osteoporosis or osteopenia? How much trauma was involved? And of course, is there actually a tumor present? We won't go into the fracture classification, and, but what matters is how fresh is that fracture? Now, the normal teaching is to use these devices, whether it be any of the systems available, you should be treating the patient within six weeks. And the purpose of the T2 scan is to look at the presence of a hematoma in the vertebral body or edema. So in terms of pain treatment, uh, fixation is the center of where we're trying to go here. If we can take out the micro movement, theoretically we should be reducing the pain. There are several schools of thought uh, there are many who would prefer just to treat these patients with conservative measures, um, perhaps physiotherapy, even braces, and so on. Personally, I don't subscribe to that, but I am a surgeon. And I think the intravertebral technique done with the patient awake is very simple, and you'll see the benefits that come for it. If you have a tumor, or multiple level collapse, then you may want to add posterior fixation to it with pedicle screws, but this is quite rare. This is more common in the younger patient who's had major trauma. And in terms of anatomical restoration, we must try and correct not only the sagittal balance, but the coronal balance, i.e. if the patient is tilted off to the side, restore the height in the disc, and try and reposition the end plates as much as possible, and particularly to try and draw forwards the retropulsed fragments that have gone into the epidural space. So end plate fracture isn't, is important because it then allows oxygen into the disc. The disc is an anaerobic uh, entity, and if it becomes aerobic, then degeneration is accelerated. And in terms of sagittal balance, if you don't increase the, or restore that disc height, you can overload the adjacent levels by as much as 94%. So you're going to see this creeping collapse. And there's an awful picture you see outside nursing homes of somebody walking forwards like this, which actually was drawn by a little girl many years ago. But that is occurring because the poor patient is suffering multi-level uh, osteoporotic collapse 
and maybe if we had intervened earlier and corrected that, we might have stopped that cascade of degeneration and collapse. And you can see here, when you have the, <coughs> the collapse anteriorly, how the weight-bearing line is brought forwards, and it overloads the front of the already collapsed disc and upsets its neighbours, but also has these effects upon the remainder of the body. With the net result that you'll get uh, loss of lung capacity, pulmonary diseases, increased chest infections, etc., from sheer pain and posture, further reduction in mobility in patients who, as they get older, have more atrophic muscles. Then you'll get ad adjacent fractures, height loss, weight loss, and urinary ret retention and infections. So uh, the treatments are have really cascaded over a number of years. We used to do, or our radiological colleagues would be doing vertebroplasty, which is putting a needle into the disc, sorry, into the vertebra, and injecting polymethyl methacrylate cement, in commas, plastic. Or, in younger people, certain biomaterials. Then came along kyphoplasty, where we would go in and put a, a balloon in, which would then restore the disc height, but the balloon goes in many directions, so you're not controlling uh, that restoration process. And the technique that I think is very intriguing, I don't have a lot of experience with it yet, but it does seem to tick a number of boxes, is this spine jack, where the end plates, which are flexible, so they don't damage the end plate, um, can be organized specifically within fractures to pick up fracture elements and it's just like a car jack. It restores the disc, uh, the vertebral height and then the polymethyl methacrylate is pumped down here and out through the little hole in the middle there. So the problem with vertebroplasty, you probably have heard of white lung disease, the polymethyl methacrylate monomer, gets into the veins and lands in the lungs, they look awful on the x-ray, and the patient is then suffering with shortness of breath, and it doesn't give you sagittal correction, and it has very suboptimal integration into the elements of that fracture. I used to do quite a lot of uh, kyphoplasty, I think it's very interesting, but at the end of the day, you've got a little marble in the middle of this vertebral body, which can eventually loosen, and because it hasn't integrated very extensively, the bone, the cancellous bone around it, will resorb and it becomes loose, and then you get loss of disc height, so you lose your restoration. And it has limited application. You can't use it so easily in the fractures in younger patients or more severe trauma. And I think it suffers with incomplete integration and it, the restoration fails over time. Well, here you have the, uh, the spine jack insertion system and you can guide these into various points within a fracture site. And then the concept is that you use the axis down the pedicle to stabilize the jack as it is wound up and the end plate is restored. But at the same time, you get this traction through the posterior longitudinal ligament of the fragments which are digging into the epidural space. So I'm going just to sh try and morph that for you. Um, you see the jack pumping up but something more important, now the cement PMMA is going in, but if you wait, you'll see how it comes out, and because you haven't compressed the area with your balloon, that polymethyl methacrylate can go into various elements of the cancellous bone and get you, theoretically, better integration, and hopefully, longer-term hold. So, the system gives you better control of craniochordal restoration. The biomaterial or PMMA 
integrates more extensively within the vertebra. You can do more complex fractures. And there is a widespread European experience. And if you look at the papers, the claims are of good long-term effects. And it appears that the restoration is sustained. So let's just end by looking at a clinical example. This is a lady of 94, uh, has had a rather complex little presentation which might be uncomfortable, it was, certainly had me thinking. Um, she'd had back pain for 10 years, her symptoms were aggravated by sitting, eased by the fetal position. The left leg became prone to co collapse in January of this year. By March, she had terrible back pain and a lumbar extension catch as she got out of the chair. And she started to develop an increasing stoop and increasing claudication and increasing back, backache. Now, that could have done for a nasty disc protrusion because this was in the lumbar spine. So anyhow, long story short, she had the spine jack inserted on the 10th of May. And I don't know if this shows, but this was the first scan I saw, first set of x-rays and scan, which actually shows the inferior end plate pushing upwards into um, a very edematous vertebra. And I was always taught, that beware of that, that is a sign of a tumor because most of these vertebral body collapses tend to be from above downwards, as you know. And here you see the CT scan. And this is, forgive me, it takes a little time, this, because it's very, very important to get these, if you like, guide wires in the right place. This is being done under local anesthetic. There's one pedicle, there's the other. And having looked at the structure of that fracture, I, want, I knew where I wanted to place these. So now we're getting the alignment correct. And there's two of these going in when you look in the lateral. So they have to be balanced. And now there's the second guide. Now we're going to core out a little bit of bone here so that we can put the spine jack into position and now coring out the other side. And now that's the first spine jack going in flat. And then the second one is now in and now we're winding it up as if we're at the roadside. And you'll see this inferior end plate beginning to improve and the flexibility of the plates of the, hijack, uh, of the <laughs> spine jack. And unfortunately, she had quite a nasty uh, end plate fracture there, and a little bit of the PMMA has come through. But it didn't go to the posterior wall, and you can see how it's inosculated laterally and fully where I wanted it to go. And that lady is uh, went to her daughter for two to three weeks. She left the next morning, two to three weeks, and is now back in her uh, supervised residential care. Very independent, apparently. She hasn't even felt it necessary to come for a follow-up. Mm -hmm.